Welcome to the Ipswich Museum, where we are going to look at the summer exhibit from this year, 2016, of Henry Rodman Kenyon. Kenyon was not a person who liked to paint in his studio. He would be much happier walking on the marsh and settling on a place very near his home, which was just off of Labor and Vane Road. He was born in Providence. He married Caroline Savory, who was a pastelist, and we'll see a few of her works too. Kenyon came to Ipswich first in about 1890. He had been studying in Paris with Dow and Richardson at the Julian School. And on one of their sojourns back here, he came to visit Dow and decided that he would like to live here. So in 1900, he built a house. He lived close by to where Dow lived, so many of his paintings overlap with Dow's scenes. Kenyon's work is a little bit different from Dow's in that Dow was a person who thought a lot about his paintings before he did them. He sketched them beforehand. Kenyon, on the other hand, wanted to be in the spot where he was painting, and he painted that day, that time, and you'll see he concentrated a lot more on the sky. This is a very early painting that was done in Europe when Kenyon was studying at the Caddy Julian. He also spent some time with my grandfather, Francis Henry Richardson, in uh, Etoffel in France, and they both painted many of these scenes where the sheep were coming home. There was a large desire of painters to paint nighttime, sometimes successful and sometimes not so successful. There are many of these where you see the moon is just the only light that shows on this painting. You're beginning to see another thing about, about Kenyon that is specific, and that is he saw the sky in a slightly different way from most other artists. He saw it with a turquoise cast to it. And we're going to see in many of the paintings as we go around this room where turquoise predominates in the painting. Here we're seeing some other, uh, two other paintings that were done in Europe. And Etap, as I mentioned before, is in France, but it's very close to the Holland border. And in both of these paintings, you see windmills and you're beginning to see very large skies, which is another trademark of Kenyon. The skies were what he concentrated on when he was looking at a scene, especially in Ipswich, he was on the marshes, and if you've ever been on the marshes yourself, you notice that the sky dominates, because everything else is flat. Well, in Holland it's flat too, and he has this marvelous sky with lots of activity in it, sort of a bucolic scene on the bottom, beautiful, but the sky is really what grabs your attention. Same thing with the one on the top, which has a large sky with lots of clouds in the sky, and a beautiful scene on the bottom, too. Kenyon's wife was Caroline Savory, as I mentioned before, and she was a pastelist. Mrs. Kenyon was well known for her portraits of young children. I have one of myself that she did. This is a very important painting that they gave us, and it's one of the largest that we received. Kenyon was known for his very small paintings because he did like to paint on the spot and plain air. He did not like to work in a studio. So this is a rare painting of his that is a little bit larger and was probably completed in the studio. As I told you before, he lived on Labor and Vein Road, uh, almost at the junction of Turkey Shore, and this is a view from the Green Street Bridge, looking down Water Street along the river. And again, you see that turquoise hue uh, that dominates both the water and the sky. And you see the row of old houses, most of which are still there. Although it's a difficult uh, scene to replicate because the trees have gotten a lot bigger in every space. There's one little spot over here. There's a man standing next to his boat and he has a bright red shirt on, and your eye is drawn to that quickly. The one above it is also done in the same area, but that one is looking back toward the bridge, so you're on the river, and in the back you'll see the bridge. Uh, again, you see quite a bit of turquoise in this, and you see the old houses. 
and relatively low tide. This is another painting that was Mrs. Um, Rothwell's favorite painting, and of all of the paintings that she owned, she wanted to make sure that this came back to Ipswich. She grew up uh, in the shadow of the canyons and played at their house, played in the area. This is the bridge uh, as it was around 1900 at the end of Labor and Vane Road. It's been replaced in the last 20 years by a much fancier bridge. It's an iconic picture of that bridge. This is another painting along the river. And as Dow had noticed before Kenyon came, that the boatmen painted their boats a different color each year. And uh, when, when Dow was doing this kind of thing, he was interested in the fact that the scene could be changed by the color of the dories. And this is just a little bit of an homage to Dow. Here is another painting nearby where Kenyon lived, and it is on the river looking back toward town, kind of out near probably the Labor and Vane uh, bridge area and looking back toward town. And in the back over here, you'll see the two steeples that are indicative of Ipswich, one being the first church and the second one being the Methodist church. But again, look at it, and what do you see? A very large sky with lots of activity in the sky, a little bit of activity in the foreground, but what you're drawn to is the sky. And over to the right um, is another painting that's, that's quite different from many of the other ones he did. It's dominated by the foreground. He spent hours and hours on the marsh, probably almost every day took a walk on the marsh and sometimes came back with a painting this marsh painting is indicative of most of the other ones that we have here. Many of them are not signed. If they're signed, they might be his signature, they might be his wife's signature. I believe he signed them when he sold them. If he didn't sell them, they were unsigned. The one we looked at before, looking back toward Ipswich, does have a signature on it, but I'm not sure that it's Henry or his wife's. His wife gave this away to a doctor who was at the time, and on the back it says, Dr. and Mrs. Mansfield from Caroline S. Kenyon, 1939. But Kenyon's paintings are often not identifiable, and um, I have seen so many of them that I pretty much can identify them with all the things I told you about the turquoise skies, the large skies, and the fact that they're not signed and that they're small paintings. Okay, the last two that we're going to look at um, that were done in Ipswich are both scenes, one in the winter in a beautiful snowstorm. And this one was a puzzle to me because the first time I saw it, I said, I know that scene and I remembered that I have a painting at my house that is done by my grandfather and it's the same scene. Probably they were out painting together my grandfather probably did a sketch and brought it home, uh, but Kenyon may have done some of this while he was outdoors. It's a little bit bigger than most of his small paintings, but it's, it's a lovely rendition. And my grandfather's is called a Millstream Ipswich, so we call this one a Millstream Ipswich, but it certainly does not have that name, and, and Kenyon did not ever give his paintings a name. Although our summer season is over and the museum itself is closed, in the winter we'll be open from February through April on Saturdays and Sundays, and in the summer we'll go back to our regular schedule of Thursday through Sunday. <laughs>